New York City, 6 a.m. An out-of-control satellite radio show is being broadcasted to millions of Americans. At the controls, Opie, the father. Oh, this is perfect. This is how it should be. Anthony Cumia, an alcoholic. Hey, hi. And Jim Norton, a comedian. It's me! I work here! Glad I got that one out. Are we on live now? Is it happening? This is it? The three men make up the Opie and Anthony show, a popular radio program known for its cringe style of entertainment and having very few limits. I like where this is going. I'm, I'm, I'm seeing a lot of options here. This is like different than any other radio. No telling what we're going to hear in here today. Tits, ass, tons of cuss words. It's just not like radio. It's just like hanging out. In the past, they have been accused of multiple FCC violations and have even gotten their show suspended from satellite radio. This is this is why this is American freedom of speech. It's good on every level. Insane. Every second is funny. Wildly funny. And philosophically spotless. Everything you are about to hear is real. Real people, real excitement. <laughs> this is the Opie and Anthony Show. <laughs> I just laugh into the microphone. It's a good way to start. To, um, you know, get everybody in that jovial mood, you know, and check my mic. <laughs> You're ready for a Monday? Who cares? It's Monday. Let's all have fun anyway. Uh, Mondays are just a pain in the ass. I'm not not breaking any new ground there, but uh, I was walking around the uh, walking around the house this morning like a fucking idiot, looking for my shoes. <laughs> it, it's it's and it's that morning, uh, the morning time. Where when you know you have to get out at a certain time, you look at the clock, and and it's like that couldn't have been two minutes. <laughs> it's it that couldn't have been two minutes. It was ten seconds, and I know I got to get out, and 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 get in and and drive in. I don't want to be late, because then the second if I go over a certain amount of time, I'm driving and Kenny calls me. You know, you you okay? So I, I, I look at the clock and I'm like, ah, I'm going to hit Kenny call time. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, so I'm, I'm walking around the house. I'm like, where the f my shoes? And then you look at all the normal spots next to the bed, under the bed, downstairs by the couch. There's only so many places I take my fucking shoes off. In front of the liquor cabinet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe that. Where did I pass out? <laughs> I was just like fucking. I couldn't find him. So I'm barefoot today. No, I had to, I had to throw on like a, a, an old pair of sneakers. Though that I still I can't I could not find my shoes. Maybe somebody stole them, and you could do a funny voice and accuse my shoes. What's that, Todd? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I couldn't find my shoes. <laughs> this is old shoeless grobble wobble snappy wapper. Yeah, hey, this is tongue McGillicuddy. <laughs> Your shoes were no good. They got up and walked out on their own. <laughs> Did they? That's always fun. Those are problems that pop up when I guess living in a mansion. <laughs> you know what? <laughs> that you lose your shoes. Perhaps that you is you it. You simply don't have time in the morning to look at every single room. Yeah, I have three <laughs> possible places my shoes could be. Yeah. Right. You yeah, never uh, lost your shoes in your apartment? No, if I didn't walk over them mm. when I woke up, they're in the living room. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, because I, I then uh, I look at the uh, grand staircase. And I'm like, now I got to walk all the way up those stairs again. Right. To check if maybe I overlooked where they were in the bedroom. And, uh, you know, I look and then, okay, maybe they're in the bathroom. Mm -hmm. So I looked in the bathroom and they weren't there. And I have no idea where my fucking shoes are, but... Um, Thank God I have another couple of pairs laying around, and uh, that problem was solved. But, I, you know, and I was getting mad. You get mad. You, so you, you don't know, know where your shoes are. I'm just alone feet are cold. in my house, walking around, actually, not just in my head, but actually saying, where the fuck are my shoes? Like Realize. a mental patient in my house. Your life is empty because your shoes are gone. Because yeah. I have my shoes are gone. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Do you ever hear that song, My Life is Empty Without You, Babe? Just put shoes where you is. Shoes, babe? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so, you know, um, 
Well, I'll keep you all posted. The mystery continues. <laughs> yes, yes, Ooh. the mystery continues. Do I'll tell. keep you posted as to where my fucking uh, shoes are. Well, what are the emergency shoes that you're wearing? They're terrible. What, what are, are they? they? They're just these fucking, you know, whatever they are. Oh, that's black sneakers. It's black new sneakers. Makers. Yeah. Oh, but of course, I think they were captured here once in a photograph, and I had to take fucking, yeah, days of grief about my fucking <laughs> shoes. Because people, yeah. No, it's because they're your shoes and they have N on them. That's true. It <laughs> yeah. is true. And they're black. They have, yeah, yeah. They're black <laughs> shoes with the letter N on them. So I, I have a special name for them. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, Fun-filled uh, weekend, though. I would admit, it sounds like it. Had, uh, oh, yeah. If Washed you lose your shoes. Your shoes yeah. yeah. If you can't find your shoes by Monday morning, you know it was, it was a pretty fun. bang up weekend there. Uh, a lot of fun. Um, had the big poker game. Oh. On Saturday, which uh, Dr. Steve was privy to this time, he came over with the rest of the fucking poker vultures that uh, I never win with these guys. I think they're in collusion against me. Did Jenny Hutt go? Jenny Hutt showed up for what amounted to uh, three or four minutes. What? She showed up with her husband. She comes downstairs, says hi. And then it's like, well, okay, I got to go. Well, they probably no. thought it would be a party where everybody was talking and communicating no. and having laughs. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, I, I don't know why. Uh, but she, she just stopped in. It was like, it was very quick. It's weird because she was like begging to go. I know. Literally on Twitter. Please, please. She never took off her, uh, her Bob Vila fucking down vest thing. Really? That she was wearing. And um, yeah, yeah. Maybe she had to get out of there quick because she stole your shoes. I'm kind of trying. I'm starting you know? to think maybe Jenny Hutt took my shoes for the abuse that she takes on this very program. Uh, her and her husband. Husband's like some fucking tall, good-looking guy. Yeah, I guess. Is he handsome? Yeah. Good for Jenny. Made everybody look stupid. He's probably well endowed. <laughs> Big cock. So? You think? No, he's all cock. She's Mr. a size Hutt. queen. Yeah. Jenny's a size queen. Yeah. What a bummer. <laughs> Not only is he handsome, he's got a massive dong. Oh, yeah. Big pole. Oh, yeah. God, yeah. I respect that. <laughs> yeah, so she stopped him. But uh, Dr. Steve, we got a few pictures of him at the poker table, um, pulling out the old wallet, pulling out <laughs> some money. I think he got fucking... I, I I think he got anally raped pretty well. Oh, yeah. no. Uh, for Please. the poker game, yeah. You want to play, Dr. Steve? I want to get raped by you guys. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> what are you saving up to be, Dr. Steve? Jewish? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so that was... Uh, so you sent him back home with nothing. Yeah, it was... Um, it was it was pretty grim for Dr. Steve. Me too. I, I lost pretty, pretty big that uh, Friday night. Uh, and then, I guess... Went upstairs to the couch, uh, fell asleep, or passed out, however you want. <laughs> right. And uh, that was the last I saw my shoes. So you the didn't have... The last I saw of them. And that was what night? That was Saturday night into Sunday morning. So you weren't a big social guy on Sunday then? Sunday, I spent the day shoeless. Yeah. Uh, around the house. Um... Did watching you, TV. Did you know your shoes were missing, or were you just having that kind of a Sunday? I did not even know my shoes were missing until this morning when I went to put them on. It's quite a uh, casual for, day. It was a very casual Sunday. Maybe Dr. Steve took them as a souvenir. Uh, or Jenny Hutt, yeah, one or the other. I, I don't say know. Jenny Hutt is the number one suspect right now. Yep. She's begging to come over, and then she leaves after three minutes. She was on Twitter saying, please, please, let me come, let me... Uh, and she no. shows up for three minutes and leaves. You don't think she took some parting gifts with her? Ulterior motive right yeah, there. Yeah, that's right. To take the shoes. Yeah. And then, um, of course, uh, during Saturday night's uh, poker festivities, on the TV was the big UFC fight. Yeah. Which uh, I was, uh, as they say, beside myself. Well, did you have a little investment in that? I had made a bet. People are uh, laughing at the amount of the bet. It was uh, with Mikey Cuffs. Mikey the cop, uh, and me and him made a bet, $25. That was your bet? <laughs> that was Mr. it. Mr. Harding from Cuckoo's Nest made the same bet with McMurphy. <laughs> <laughs> I'll bet $25. It was, it was a, a, an inexpensive bet, but it was the principle of the bet, more so than the dollar value. Yeah. And um, I, I watched the uh, St. Pierre fight, and, and, and the judging 
was atrocious. Mm -hmm. And I wound up losing the bet. And uh, I was none too happy about it. How they fucking... How the judges weren't weren't arrested for uh, for that uh, is beyond me. They're terrible, and and this is why. Before the show, I said I, I think there was a pro Canadian vibe in there because another fight should that ever make a difference? No, but I just I had a feeling about it because there was another a guy, uh, Rory McDonald, who I love. He's one of my favorite fighters, but he he lost the fight to um, uh, Robbie Lawler. Mm -hmm. He fuck. He's a tall, skinny Canadian guy, and he lost. Yeah. And Lawler, I thought, beat him pretty handily. I think at least two rounds to one. And one of the judges, it was still a split decision. And I'm like, what judge thought that fucking Rory McDonald won that exactly. fight? Exactly. Yeah. I, I believe me. I wanted him to win the fight, and he didn't win it. Yeah, yeah. What judge sits there and goes like, "Oh yeah, he won that one handily." <laughs> And this is why I love fucking Dana, because he came out and oh, was, was he angry. He was disgusted. And it is to his advantage. Like as a UFC, the head of the UFC. Yeah. It's to your advantage if George St. Pierre wins. Yes. Because hopefully you can get a win out of uh Anderson Silva in December. Right. And then maybe book a super fight like a Silva mm -hmm. GSP fight. It's not to his advantage if fucking uh Hendricks uh wins. Right, right. But he knows that seeing a fight end like that it's and, and have a, a re it's terrible for the for the fucking for ufc yeah it puts ufc in that same realm as stupid fucking boxing which just got destroyed because of horrible judging and uh, management and and everything else that goes along with boxing now are the judges just bad like what motivation would they have you don't. You never mm. know, man. Is right? It, is it an odds thing with Vegas? Right. You don't know. You don't know. Athlet, the uh, Nevada Athletic uh, State Athletic Commission has nothing to do with UFC or boxing. They're completely independent. Yeah. There's nothing Dana can do to change them. I don't think, and neither could boxing. He was angry. We do. We have a yeah, Dana's clip. Uh, clip because I, I I love this. I love the fact that he jumps right on it. That's what. That's why people. <laughs> that's one of the reasons UFC is so popular. Yeah. Is because he fucking just comes out and says what fans are thinking. Yes. He doesn't, yes. He doesn't tow the company on. And and before. He actually made this statement because I got right on fucking line on Twitter and just started fucking lambasting the judges and what a, a fucking joke it was. And and then these motherfuckers just start going, oh, you asshole, he won that fight. Like, what are you? What did you watch? What fight did you watch? I watched it again last night. I said, let me yeah, be fair yeah. and watch it again. And uh, and then they're like, oh, yeah, but did G first of all, GSP being beat up had nothing. Like, his face didn't matter to me because he does, like, in the Condit fight, he gets fucking, uh -huh. he bruises. Some people just don't yeah, like that. Yeah. that you, you, you fucking rub their cheek and all of a sudden they're bleeding. <laughs> but he lost the fight. I feel like, no, uh -huh. the 10 points, I watched the fight. Uh -huh. He lost the fight. He lost the fucking fight. And then Dana Come comes out and says he lost the fight. Of course he did. Uh, and I think Dana would know uh, pretty well. If, if somebody's winning or losing a fight. So yeah, uh, I mean, go it's fuck in, yourself. It's in Dana's best interest to yeah. side with the judges. And, well, no, they're not that right. bad. You know what I mean? He doesn't yeah, want yeah. people to know necessarily that the judges are bad, but he's being honest. And he and he got the result, which was a George St. Pierre win, which, which again, sets up a fight uh -huh. with uh, Anderson Silva or whatever, which which is a tremendous financial gain. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And he still came out and he goes, it's bullshit. He yeah. wants the, the judging to be fair and to be right. And that's why I think people like, a, like him so much. A super fight. But at what cost, Jim? At what cost? Yeah. I yes, mean, uh, yes. Rogan said it. In the <laughs> yeah. ring, Rogan mm -hmm. said it. You know, it's like, uh, and these are guys that love George St. Pierre. Yeah. That these are not guys that have fucking invested in him losing. But he said to Hendricks in the ring, it's like, uh, a lot of people, myself included, think you won this fight. Because you look like a, a fucking moron if you're standing there. If you're Joe Rogan, you're in that ring. And you go along with the, the horrible yeah. uh, decision of the judges. You look like you're some dumb crony. Right. Uh, it, 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 that's not Rogan. That's not his fucking personality. You know, or Dana. They and say what's on their mind. And Dana knows, too, that the whole selling point of the UFC is that it's real. Like, the integrity right, of right. the product depends yes. on... Unlike that fucking horrible wrestling stuff you watch. And, and boxing, because well, people boxing stopped too. watching that. <laughs> yeah. Because they couldn't depend on the result anymore. Yes. What, what, one of the reasons boxing got stopped being watched is, like, you just didn't get the fights you wanted. It took mm -hmm. too long. And I'm thinking that while I was watching this fight. Yeah, it's true. I was like, I like Hendricks a lot, uh, or Johnny Hendrick, and, and his big left hand. I'm like, I want to see him fight safe here. And I got the fight. Yeah. I want to see the Anderson Silva fucking Wyman rematch. I got that fight. It's coming. It's like every right. fight you want, they give you. Mm -hmm. it's fuck, fuck boxing. Man. Yeah. All right, let's hear uh, Dana's uh, reaction to this horrible and I know decision. it's Hendrick, and I've been saying Hendricks before you start killing me oh, on Twitter. Hendrick. Yeah. All right. This is a fight. It's whoever inflicts the most damage. You get hurt, you get wobbled, you get dropped. I, 
uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm blown away that George St. Pierre won that fight. And listen, I'm a promoter. He's the biggest pay-per-view star on, on the fucking planet for me. And I still don't think he won that fight. I want what's fair, and that, that wasn't fair. I think the Nevada State Athletic Commission is atrocious. I think the governor needs to step in immediately before these guys destroy this sport like they did boxing. Who has the next question? <laughs> The alternatives are that the, that the governor needs to step in and fix the incompetence that is happening in the state of Nevada that used to be the best commission in the world. It's absolute 100% incompetence. <laughs> and it needs to stop. It needs to end. I'm fucking scared to come back here and do fights. I'm afraid of this state. Jesus. How fucking great is that? Yeah, that is, uh, yeah that's... That's an honest fucking statement right there. <laughs> yes, Hendrix. I was saying it with an S, and then I thought I was wrong, and it's oh, with an S. Oh, <laughs> I'm, <a dummy. laughs> I'm a dummy. <laughs> I, I, how much do you love that statement, though? Yeah, it's 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 uh, it keeps your credibility and the credibility of your your sport. Uh, yeah, because I was just livid. I'm yelling at everyone on Twitter. Come on, Dana, fix it. And then Joe Rogan's a crony. No, but Rogan no, said it, and, and Dana hates that shit, man. Yeah. It makes him look bad. It does. Once Dana said that, then was everybody on Twitter off and they your just, case? They just, yeah, they just go away. Like, oh, yeah, I knew that. Oh, was I on a block fest this week? I probably blocked over 100 people this weekend. Why? I have various reasons. <laughs> there was the fight, you know, didn't like that. So if they disagree with you about the fight, they're blocked? Um, No, it all depends on how they do it. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's how they do it. That and, of course, uh, you know, any racial discussion will get some people blocked. Others, not so much. People don't seem to understand. They think it's just if you disagree with me, mm -hmm. you get blocked. It's not. It's not true. There are plenty of people that I hold debates with uh, quite often, and, and it's, it's fine. If, as long as we're, you know, a little give and take, shit like that. When it just comes down to, you know, you're an asshole or you're a racist or you're something, yeah. then, you know, you just fucking block them. Why am I... Am I going to bother? I can't do those on Twitter because I get too frustrated in 140 characters. Mm -hmm. you, 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 ought to do, you ought to write a blog or something, like when you get like one of these fucking things. Yeah. It's so frustrating to not be able to say what you want to say in 140 right, characters. Right, right, yeah. Sometimes yep. you want to, and then, you just, and then you're like, you want to make everybody see. And I, I mean, me too. I don't know, but you don't care. You just got to. Yeah. You, but you said that. It was, uh, it's just too much. Yeah, it's, it's, you really have to finesse those letters. It's a no win. <laughs> it really is. You're not changing anyone's mind anyway, but um, I just like the spirited uh, discussion. <laughs> I get too angry. I do, yeah. I, I, I get pretty angry myself, um, but uh, you know, it's the only dumb outlet we have uh, yeah. in the public. These days. You know, we have this, which is great. Yeah, you got a, We got microphones. <laughs> one of the biggest radio shows in the country. But, you know, who wants to talk to the fucking callers oh. about that? So, yeah, it gives the other people an opportunity to chime in, as they say chime in. How did you see the fucking uh, Rashad uh, Chael fight? Uh, yeah, yeah. Rashad is fucking... See, I've taken one of those punches. They're not pleasant. Oh. <laughs> awesome, yeah. He was probably hitting Chael harder than he hit you as well. In the face. In the face. Yeah. <laughs> Imagine that punch in your face. Yeah. Oh. Ouch. Fuck. A, lo a lot of times in a row. Oh. Did you see uh, the fucking... There was one point when St. Pierre Hendricks in the first round when um, Hendricks was driving his elbow into the face. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. The amount of punishment those guys take from elbows, man. Wow, is it, that awful. Just, it's amazing they don't end uh, sooner. And uh, the ref, he was letting him fight. There were a couple instances where I'm like, oh, my God, they're going to stop this. Yeah. And, uh, you know, the ref didn't stop it. He stood them up a lot more than I thought he would. Like, a lot of, a couple times they were in the middle of the ring, and they were actually mm. standing, and he broke them up to fight. Sometimes, like, the guys are just both taking a break. Yeah. A judo, uh, a jiu-jitsu move, they'll, they'll break, stand them up. I didn't think they were doing that, and he was still... Yeah, yeah. He was, like, almost over-managing. He was, like, Tony larusa the whole thing. But uh, the best one is fucking... Uh, the best one is uh, uh, Herb Dean, the, the black guy. I think he's the mm. best ref in UFC. It was... Uh, uh, aside from the horrible... Uh, uh, judging, uh, it was pretty good. I kind of liked it. Yeah, that's some of that conditioning that yeah. I will never be able to oh, understand. Jesus. Not only do you have to be have your body ready to fight like every whatever four to six months, but you have to condition your body to take a massive beating. How you do that? Every four to six months. Yeah, how could you? How do you even condition your body to fucking take a beating? To just it's be hurt. Did you see those ridiculous. fucking with with uh, with, with uh, those those kicks? When when um, St. Pierre and Hendricks were kind of like 
grabbing each other. Hendrix was doing those fucking knees to yeah, the thighs. Yeah, just pulled the yeah. knee up and, and... Oh, in the thigh, and his thighs are just jerking back. You almost said hurts. I had to get a big Charlie oh, horse right there in the middle God. of the ring. And that's such like, a... ow. Like, that's part of it. Like, you, not only do you have to protect your face and be like, okay, if I duck and weave here, every part of your body is vulnerable. You can get yeah. kneed in the thigh. Yeah, which would really hurt. Yeah. <laughs> I remember getting on that cramp in my leg and screaming in, in pain. And my father told me, you know, next time you hear you scream like that, you better have an arrow in your chest. Right. Right. Just, so that's got to hurt. Too bad he didn't say in your head you might have been Steve Martin. Ooh. You might have become a very famous <laughs> comedian. I, I get it, Jim. Okay, <laughs> okay. <laughs> Good. That's what happened. As, as, as I said that, I just like, you better keep explaining until the break. <laughs> 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 oh, shit. <laughs> so it was a very, uh, very action-packed, fun-filled uh, weekend, I think. And uh, it was capped off shoeless yeah. last night. Poor Anthony. All right. Well, that sucked. To hear the Opie and Anthony show five days a week live on satellite radio, online on your phone or tablet, or even on demand. Go to SiriusXM.com. Also, interact with the Opie and Anthony show on Twitter, at Opie Radio, at Anthony Cumia, and at Jim Norton.